Hi everybody, this is Ableton Certified Trainer Brian Funk, aka Afro DJ Mac, with a tutorial brought to you by ADSR Sounds. Make sure you check out the ADSR YouTube page for lots of free tutorials, and also head over to their website for some great online course content. Today we're going to talk about some new features in Ableton Live 9.5, specifically the Max for Live device ARP, which will allow you to create some really interesting melodic patterns quite easily. It's a lot of fun and I think you're going to enjoy it. Check it out. So I've got a track with the new Max for Live PolySynth loaded and before that is the new ARP device. You can get all of these devices from Ableton.com and the Max for Live Essentials Pack. It's updated for Live 9.5 and you've got some new synthesizers, some audio and MIDI effects that you really got to check out. They're lots of fun and really expand the possibilities of your Ableton Live setup. So here's what the poly sounds like as I've got it set up right now. And I'm going to turn on ARP and so we can hear what this sounds like now. It's an arpeggiator. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play a little track here. I've got a clip going and on this clip we can see it's really simple MIDI stuff going on here just kind of holding some chords. And ARP is kind of doing all the magic here. So. What we've got here are the division control. So this determines how fast the notes are arpeggiated. We can get all the way up to 64th notes. I got it at 16th. We can do triplets, which are pretty cool. We can do dotted notes. We can turn sync off and have it free. And then we can control it ourselves. So we can get some like cool effects that way too. Um, we've also got a swing control. This is one thing I wish our, the arpeggiator inside a live had, but now we've got it in this great Max for Live device that gives us swing on our arpeggiator. And you'll notice the beat I have right now does have a bit of a swing. So it is kind of nice to throw a little swing on there so we can uh, kind of match the beat a little bit. Speaking of matching the beat, let me just hit play again so it's in sync with each other. Sometimes when you play with the division, you'll go off time a little bit. Now we've got an octave switch. This is all the way down to zero, so we're just getting the exact notes that were played on the MIDI clip. And we can add in another two octaves, all the way up to six octaves. So you can really get some cool sounds. I like it right here with one. We can also just add like a couple steps. So you get some other notes going on there. This plays around with the order of the octaves. And you get some different sounds using that here. Bring it back down to one. Note is the note order. So this is as played. This will just always go up, always go down. You got chords. Chords are pretty cool. And some random stuff as well. Chords can be like a fun thing to get some nice rhythmic chords. Okay, I'm gonna keep it as I had it though. We can turn on the hold function, which means with hold on, you should be able to stop this clip and the notes will keep playing. So what's nice about this is in a live performance situation, so you can play some notes and let go. And it's almost like a sustain pedal for your arpeggiator. And re-trigger, let's turn our clip back on. Re-trigger will re-trigger this pattern every time a new note is hit. So you notice it's not making it all the way to the end every time. Speaking of which, we've got our pattern length. So we can go up to 16 steps on our arc, or as little as just one. Now, what you're going to be controlling here are a couple different things. Our velocity, our note length, and we can also map the arpeggiator's parameters to another parameter in live. So let's first start with velocity. We can have like some accented notes. I'm just drawing them in here. So that'll give us like some nice like rhythmic stuff going on. You can hear the pattern, definitely sounds a lot different. We can also activate and deactivate different notes in the pattern. Which is another cool thing. You're kind of noticing now already like our little piece of music here is starting to like evolve and grow. 
based on the different steps being activated. And I'll turn it back on. Maybe I'll just say before I do this, something I like to do is to have another an audio track going, listening to my bass track here, and I'll just like record clips as I like them. So I've got my little bass line going here. Now that was just a three bar loop, but um, the idea here is that as you get things you like, you can just record new clips and you'll have them as audio clips over here. Let me just delete that track. So I'm going to reactivate all our steps. And something I want to do with my velocity is maybe I want to randomize it. And that's what these controls are for. This will randomize. This is the randomize button. So we have different velocities here. We can constrain the range of our velocity with this little slider. So now the velocity will only be randomized within this range. So as we hit it, everything falls within this area. I can even do it like way up here. We get almost everything at the top. So randomizing is pretty cool. And it works really nicely in the ARP. Great way of generating ideas and new rhythmic patterns. I'll put it to say something like that. Next, let's look at length. Length is your note length. So again, we can change the length of our notes. Get these kind of like short stuttery sounds. And maybe like a couple longer ones. And again, random works the same way as it does before. And again, you're hearing, we're getting a lot of variation in this pattern by randomizing stuff. And let's just get everything right back up to full length. Maybe a little less. Or we'll randomize it. Okay, now probably one of the coolest functions is map. So map allows you to map some arpeggiator values to different parameters in your live set. So you click map here. Now I'm going to pick my low pass filter here. And now we can just draw on values for our low pass filter. And it's moving now in correspondence to this little thing here. It's very cool. Lots of different stuff. And again, we can like change, deactivate some of our patterns, get some neat sounds that way. We can change our loop brace too. So maybe we want to create something that like doesn't quite loop properly, like 13 bars. So this means that for quite a while, we'll get a lot of different variations in the way the filter's working. Very cool. And keep in mind, you can map any parameter in live here. So we could even go into like, say our drum beat here. And maybe we'll map like the reverb, for instance. So I'm going to go back over here, we'll just select map, and I'll just map like the dry-wet of our reverb. And we'll just give like certain beats, lots of reverb. Let's turn this up a little bit so we can hear it. So you can hear the reverb is moving now, thanks to the arpeggiator, which is pretty cool. And we'll turn this back down. I personally like it a lot on the filter for this particular example. Maybe not that much, so let's do a little randomization. Very cool. And one last thing is the advanced feature. Now, this is pretty cool. It allows you to change the way the octaves work. So I'm going to just activate it here. And we only have one octave, right? So I can control how this first octave plays back. I'm going to set it two octave higher. Now if I turn this up, the next octave is set to go three octaves higher. And I can control the next octave here. That's now set to zero. Let me put it at negative one. and so on and so forth. You can really kind of customize and make your arpeggiator like really complex sounding. Let's start our first one here. 
So over quite a bit of time, we're getting lots of different sounds and patterns out of this arpeggiator. So you can imagine there's quite a bit of possibilities here. Turn advanced off and we go back to our original pattern. So I hope you enjoy this device. I think it's a really awesome tool for creating um, interesting patterns. Again, remember all this like bass line we're getting is just coming out of these MIDI notes on this little clip here. We're getting quite a lot of variation. So there it is, it's the ARP device by max for live in Ableton Live 9.5. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm Afro DJ Mac, and this is brought to you by ADSR Sounds. Check out their website for some great online courses to learn some music production, and also head over to their YouTube page for some free online tutorials. Thanks a lot, and enjoy.